All right, it's time to figure out how to actually locate images in a plane mirror. So I've, I've shown you a video of, of how to, how it's generally done, but we're, we're gonna walk through the steps and, and actually take you through exactly how to do it with a very simple object, and then we'll look at the slightly more complicated objects as we go along, all right? Okay, so what is an image? Well, an image is simply a visible copy of, of any object. So for example, if you're looking in your bathroom mirror, you see a copy of yourself and anything around you in that mirror. So that picture of you you see on the other side of the mirror, that is that is what an image is. Now, we want to figure out, well, how do we find out exactly where that image is located on the other side of the mirror? So I have here an object in front of a mirror. How do I figure out exactly where it is on the other side? There are a series of steps that are shown here, and I'm going to switch to um, doing this on paper and show you step by step how you actually go through this, okay? All right, now that you have a general idea of how to find an image in a mirror, let's look specifically at how we can find exactly where that image would be located, all right? So we've got a, an object over here. We're gonna start simple. We're gonna start with just a dot, all right? Um, and the reason we're gonna start with just a dot is that when we use or look at more complicated objects, even something as simple as a pen or a pencil, um, we're going to have to use more than one point on the object to actually find the image. But since we just have a dot, it'll be relatively simple. Now, we're going to follow through the steps for each of the rays here. Step one, we're going to draw an incident ray from the object to some point of incidence on the mirror. Now, remember, in order for a ray to be useful to find an image, it actually has to reflect off the mirror. So if we drew a ray going down here, or if we drew a ray going up here, or if we drew a ray going over here, it's not going to reflect off the mirror, so it's not gonna be useful to actually find the image. So we're going to just randomly choose any direction, and it really doesn't matter, as long as it hits the mirror at some point. So let's say our first one is going to go right there. So we're gonna draw a line from our object to the mirror, and we're going to put an arrow on it. And remember, we need to include an arrow on every ray to indicate what direction light is traveling. So light is traveling from the object towards the mirror. Now, the next step was we're going to, uh, we're going to draw the point of incidence. So that would be right there. So I'm just going to put a, a dot to indicate this is where the ray is hit. And then the next, we're going to draw a normal. So a reminder that a normal has to be at exactly 90 degrees from the surface of the mirror. So if I put my protractor up against it and I put this line on 90 and this line out at zero, that means that if I draw straight out to that point, I'm going to have a line that is exactly 90 degrees from the surface. Now I'm gonna draw this as a, actually, I'm gonna draw this using a different color. I'm just gonna use a pencil here to draw the dotted line, just so we don't get it confused with any of our rays of light, okay? So we now have our normal coming out 90 degrees from the surface. So now we have to measure the angle of incidence. And remember, the angle of incidence is from the normal to the incident ray. It is not this angle, right? It's this angle right here. So I take my protractor, I'm gonna line up zero along the normal and the vertic vertex on the protractor will line up perfectly with that point of incidence. And if I look very carefully at my protractor, it looks like it is 21, 22, 23, somewhere between 23 and 24 degrees. So now I can use that to draw my reflected ray. All right, so I'm gonna line it up on the opposite side. And I'm gonna use the inner, so we have 10, 20, and then 21, 22, and there's 23, so it's right about there. And I can draw the reflected ray. All right. And again, I'm gonna make sure that I include the arrowhead on there to indicate the direction of travel. So this angle here, this angle of incidence will equal that angle of reflection. All right. Now that is 
our first reflected ray. The next step for it is, for it is we're going to extend it back behind the mirror. All right, so it's reminder, it's the reflected ray that we're extending back. So I'm gonna draw a dotted line. And the dot, reason we use a dotted line is because this is what's called a virtual ray. All right, this is not actually light traveling back here. This is just an imaginary line, okay? All right, so now we've drawn our first ray and we're gonna go through the same steps again using a second ray. And the reason we're gonna do that is because we need two rays to find a point where the extended ray at the back crosses and where that crosses is where our object is going to be located. All right, so I'm going to draw a ray coming off the object to here. And again, include my arrow to make sure we know what direction it's traveling. There's my point of incidence. I will draw my normal in here. So dotted line. We don't have to go all the way out. That's good enough. And then we have to measure the angle of incidence. So again, we put protractor up against the line and line it up against the normal. And we find that it is exactly 40 degrees, which is very convenient. So we flip it around, line it up on here. Here's our 40 marker on the protractor. And we can draw a reflected ray. All right, and again, don't forget the arrow to indicate the direction of travel. And now that we've drawn a reflected ray, we can extend it back in behind. And we're gonna have to extend it a little farther to make sure we actually get that point correct. And let's just make sure, and we're gonna extend this ray back a little bit too, just to make sure we've got it crossed. So we can see the point where those two lines cross is right here. So that is where our image is going to be located. So once you've found your image, you should label it. Usually you label it with the letter I. All right. All right, now that you have actually seen how to find the image of a simple object, it's time for you to practice. So I'm gonna get you to pause the video here um, and go through the two examples or practice objects in, uh, on the worksheet. Once you're done, come back and continue on to the next step. So the next step is actually being able to draw a slightly more complicated image. So the first example in part A, we saw a simple object. It was just a dot. It's very easy to just draw a couple of rays and figure out exactly where that image is. Now we have a slightly more complicated object. Again, we're going to switch to paper. And when we're done that, we'll, we'll come back here. All right, we've seen how we can locate the image of a simple object in a mirror using uh, using light rays. Um, but now let's take a look at a more complicated structure. Now, this isn't obviously something significantly complicated. It's it's a, pe a pencil. Our object is a pencil, right? But um, because it's not just a dot, we have to take into consideration how it faces the mirror. So it could be lined up this way, or it could be lined up this way, or this way. There are a number of different ways that this pencil could be lined up in front of the mirror. So using a single point to try to figure out where the image is gonna be located isn't going to work. So what we need to do is use more than one point on an object. Now, on something like a pencil, it's fairly simple to just choose the two ends. When you have more complicated objects, it can become a little bit more difficult, but realistically, what you're trying to do is find two or more points on the object that will allow you to draw the image on the other side. Now, what we're going to do here is exactly the same as if it was just a single point as our object. We're just gonna have to go through the steps a couple of times, all right? So in the example that we went through where it was just a single point for our object, we drew two rays coming off of it. 
And from that, we were able to get two reflected rays and trace those back to a single point. Well, we're gonna do that for each point on our object. So point A, we're gonna draw a couple of rays coming off of it and find out where they meet back here. And then we'll do the same thing again with point B, all right? So we're gonna start off with point A and same as before, we're gonna follow through the same steps as we did the first time. I'm going to draw an incident ray coming off. All right, so again, make sure you're putting an arrow on there to indicate the direction of travel. And then we're gonna put in our normal. So the normal would be right about there. And then we have to measure our angle of incidence, which works out to be, looks like about 13 degrees. We come over to this side and we mark off there and that will be our first ray all right again make sure the arrow is on there and then we can extend it back behind the mirror so that we can use that to find out where those two rays meet all right so that's ray number one ray number two i'm going to put over here so i'm going to draw a line again and again, make sure you have an arrow on it to show the direction of travel. Again, I'll draw my normal in. And then I can measure my angle of incidence. And that looks like it's at pretty much exactly 25 degrees. Come back to the other side. we can draw in our reflected ray. All right, again, make sure the arrow is there to indicate the direction of travel. And then we'll extend this line back to the point where those two cross. And that looks like it is right around here. All right, so that is A. This is point A on our image. So I'm gonna just call that AI, all right? So now we're gonna go through those exact same set of steps all over again with point B. So you'll notice that I'm using multiple colors to do that. So one, as, as you're getting more and more complicated drawings, it's going to get cluttered, all right? So it's a really good idea to, to use more than one color definitely use more than one. Ideally, use a different color for every single line that you draw, okay? So again, we've got our angle of, or our incident ray. We'll put in our normal. Measure our angle of incidence, which looks like it is about 15 degrees. So we'll go over here, put in a reflected ray at about 15 degrees right there. Draw our ray. Again, put in the arrow. And then once again, we're going to extend back behind the mirror. And then finally, our last ray, we're going to draw here. Once again, make sure we've got that direction on it, put in our normal. And I know it seems like we're putting in this normal for nothing because we're using a flat mirror. It would be very easy to just measure it off of the mirror. But the reason we have this normal is because not all mirrors are flat. So as we get further along, we're gonna have to be able to measure angles without having a flat mirror. We're gonna have to have this normal in there in order to actually be able to make a measurement. All right, so looking at our incident ray, it looks like it is 35, 36, say somewhere between 36 and 37 degrees. 
So do 35, 36, somewhere right around there. And we'll draw in our reflected ray. And again, we'll extend back. And notice again that I'm using dotted lines in behind the mirror. That's to indicate that there are that they are virtual lines. They are not real. Light isn't actually magically showing up behind your mirror. It's just we're extending back where it looks like those light rays are coming from. All right, so where those two meet, that is our point B. So we'll call that B I. And so if you look at our original object, we had a pencil with a, an eraser up here and a point up here. So we can try to fill in the blanks here. It looks like our pencil would look something like this. All right, so you can see we have our original on this side, our image on this side, and we'll, we'll move this up above just to give it a little bit more clarity here, All right? So based on those rays, we can extrapolate back and figure out exactly where that image will be. All right, now that we have seen how to do slightly more complicated objects, it's time for you to practice again. So we'll pause the video, go to the worksheet and try the two practice objects. All right, now you may have noticed that at the bottom right of each one of the practice images, there was the word salt, S-A-L-T, and there was a place for you to type or to write in beside it. Well, that's an acronym for how you can actually describe an image. So there are a couple of, or there are four characteristics that you can use when describing an image. S stands for size, so the size of the image. Now, for size, we're usually not actually measuring the exact size of it, although we will look at that a little bit later on. What we're usually doing is comparing it to the original. All right, so is the image the same size? Is it smaller or is it larger than the original object? A stands for attitude. And that just means, is it upright or has it been flipped upside down? All right, L stands for location. For now, we are going to restrict location to two possible options. Is it in front of the mirror or is it behind the mirror? Later on, we will look at slightly more uh, specific locations that that image can be found. And then finally, T stands for the type of image. Is it real or is it virtual? Now that's gonna take a little bit of an explanation. So we'll get to that in a second. So here are a couple of examples. Um, we have our original object on the left and the ways you can describe it. So these in here are gonna be your images. So this image would be larger than the original. This would be the same size as the original. And this would be smaller than the original. As far as attitude, this is upright compared to this. They are both oriented the same way, so this would be inverted. Now, if the original object was upside down, then this would be upright and this would be inverted. You're always comparing it to the original object, right? The next is location. Um, if the image is found in front of the mirror or whether it is found behind the mirror. Now, this isn't really gonna make a whole lot of sense to you right now because anytime you've looked at a mirror, of course, it's it's always in behind. But we're gonna see when we start playing with different shapes of mirrors and with lenses, the image sometimes can be in front as well, right? Um, and then finally, the type, is it real or is it virtual? Okay, so now let's, let's talk about, about what that means. Well, in a virtual image, light rays don't actually meet where the image is formed. So if we take a look here at this example, I have a mirror, I've got an object in front of the mirror, and the light rays come off of the mirror. Now notice there are no arrows on this, which makes it a little harder to see, but you can, you can figure out what's going on here fairly easily. So the light rays are coming off of the object, they're hitting the mirror, and they're reflecting back into this person's eye. Now, where we actually see the image is back here, but Notice that this is a solid surface, right? Light rays come along here, they hit the mirror and they bounce. Light rays can't pass through that mirror. So what that means is that when we found the image, it was formed 
with what are called the virtual rays of light, right? These are the actual rays. And then when we drew any image that was behind here, when we extended those reflected rays, we did them using dotted lines. And that is because they're not actually rays of light. Light doesn't penetrate this mirror. So a virtual image is an image formed by light coming from an apparent light source. It looks like it's coming from there. Now, we are smart enough, again, I've mentioned this before, we're human beings, we're smart enough to look in a mirror and realize that, oh, that object's not actually back there, right? Like there's, there's, when you look in a bathroom mirror, you don't think there is a human being buried in the wall behind the mirror. Eh, not, out, not all organisms are that smart though. You can fool simpler, not so, um, not so intelligent, organisms by placing a mirror in front of them and they'll think that there is an actual object there in behind that mirror all right but again we're smart enough to know that light didn't pass through there there's not a buried image in the wall or the sorry there's not a buried object in the wall it's a virtual image so in a virtual image again we have an image formed by light coming from an apparent light source light is not coming from the actual image location all right, it's bouncing off the mirror. Now, this is typical of all plane mirrors. Anytime you look at an object in a plane mirror, even if that object is yourself, the image is always going to be virtual. It is always going to appear to be behind the mirror, and it will be formed by an apparent light source, not the actual source. So, in other words, your eyes are being fooled. All right, mirrors are tricks. Mirrors are showing you something that isn't actually there. Now, a real image is an image that can be seen on a screen or in the air as a result of light rays actually hitting or arriving at the image location. And a very simple example of this is in the classroom, when something is projected up on the screen from the projector, that is a real image. Light is actually coming from the projector and it is actually producing an image on the screen. All right, so that's a real image. All right, so now go back to those practice images that you just drew and go through each of the characteristics of salt. So the size, the attitude, the location, and the type, and describe each of those two images.